Good morning. I don't even know if I'm even awake enough to present this impromptu lecture, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because, <laughs> um, you know, just going to be my usual raw self and vulnerable self. Okay, so let's get to it. So this conversation is about compassion for compassion for our toxic partners, right? Compassion for ourselves, compassion for humanity. Um, and we're going to have compassion for uh, the toxic partner because they were or are the guiding post to healing. And um, I think we are uh, infinitely connected to them for this. For me personally, I will always love my partners. I will always love them. I will always love the people that have been in my life. I will always love um, all the relationships. Even if they've been toxic, I will always love that person. Um, Love heals. Love heals. Love heals this collective virus of trauma and toxicity. Love is the antidote. And, um, and for me personally, each one of my toxic partners or toxic relationships, I saw the spark of divinity in them. And I witnessed my own. Um, I witnessed their toxicity and they witnessed mine. <laughs> um, they witnessed my toxicity and abuse. That was a result of my trauma and woundedness and my desire to merge. The light and darkness exists in all of us. Okay. So, <clears throat> so when we enter into these toxic relationships, um, we're, we're, it's in, inevitable that it will, that the relationship will separate. That's the point of the relationship. If you're staying inside a toxic relationship, that means you're toxic. You're participating in toxicity. And so love heals the collective virus of trauma and toxicity because it is an act of love to set boundaries, to separate. It is an act of love for ourselves and the other because setting boundaries and separating is the first gateway into our soul. Um, and all of us, in order to have a healthy persona in the world, and I'll be talking more about that in some lectures this week, um, we need to have congruence. We have to have a an authentic relationship with our true nature of good and evil. Um, we have to take responsibility on a very grave level, my friends, for our individual consciousness, for the things that we're doing in our life, the things we're inputting and the things we're outputting. It is our responsibility to heal. Um, so as we separate it is an act of love. We create boundaries. It is an act of love for, for yourself and for the other person because you're inviting a collapse of the false self and an, an entryway into, into the inward domains of our consciousness. And 
but the, the, we have to have humility to accept imperfection. We have to stop the individual and collective splitting that's happening right now. It's imperative um, for us to collectively heal. So the aim of toxic relationships is to heal. And I, and so there's four things I wanted to share with you that I was thinking about in relationship to this process of healing toxic relationships and their purpose. Um, we're, we're first, like I said, we're, we're separating. We separate, expose, accept, take responsibility. What does that mean? So we separate, we create boundaries. We stop, we stop the merging. If these two circles were merging, that become, that, then we get stuck here, you know, in the, um, in, in the in external realm. We get stuck here with, with these um, false ideations of ourself and the other, be, other person. We split. But when we, our consciousness is, we have to, the opposite of merging is, is complete separation. And so when we completely separate, we can heal. And when we come back together in hopes that we interpolate, because now we're going inward and have something to give to the other person and to give to humanity, to our collective consciousness. So we separate, we create boundaries and as an act of love, a gateway into our soul, an act of love for ourselves and other. Second, uh, we expose imperfections to collapse the self. That's why I am exposing myself. I'm exposing my toxicity. I have to take responsibility for my abusive behavior. I have to take responsibility for me projecting my rage onto another human being. I have to take responsibility for my toxic behaviors. And I need to expose myself to eliminate the false self. And as I do this, I am inviting each one of us to do that and to know that it's okay because part of the problem is that we don't have a, we're not, we're not, when we don't seek inward and do the work and then bring it out in the world, we're not in the process of wholeness. Okay. And we're going to look at this, this, this diagram more. So we, so number one, we, we set boundaries and we separate as an act of love. We expose uh, the imperfection to collapse the self. We have to face authentically our true natures of good and evil, of the villain and the antichrist and the hero in all of us. Um, take responsibility for that. I, I, um, I'm, I'm not um, interested in politics. I think politics, intrinsic to politics is a... Uh, is a splitting, is a defense mechanism splitting. So I don't particularly like politics. So, but I there um, and I don't agree with everything. Absolutely, I don't. You know, that's the thing. You know, we, we're here as human beings to share information with each other and learn from each other. So anyway, um, Jordan Peterson, um, I don't. I'm not in, interested in his politics per se. I, I he has talked about this because he is a union analyst. I I, I don't. I think there's flaws in his thinking, but. Um, um, but nonetheless, he is a wonderful uh, pioneer, um, as far as I can tell, uh, in helping the collective heal. Um, so third, we, we humble ourselves to accept our imperfection. How do we do that? We have to accept the archetypal processes in our psyche that are both the villain and the hero, the, the antichrist and the Christ image. Carl Jung speaks about this in his uh, book, Ion. Um, and uh, we'll be talking more about that eventually. Um, and then fourthly, as we 
uh, or no, let's go back. So I'm sorry. So as we humble ourselves and we accept our imperfections, we stop the splitting because because splitting is the is the collective is the collective uh, defense mechanism, the individual and collective defense mechanism of our time that we must heal. We need to stop the splitting individually so we can stop the splitting collectively. We have to accept that um, we have imperfections individually and collectively. We gotta stop pointing the finger, stop blaming each other, and look deep within ourselves and have compassion for um, for 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 the uh, for the toxicity in, in this world, um, and then we have to take responsibility. We have to move our locus of uh, control inward. I am responsible for my individual domain of consciousness. I am responsible for it. I'm taking uh, a responsibility. So we have to stop the splitting collectively. We have to stop the um, external locus of control. Stop seeking outward with what you can only find inward. That's what this channel is about. That's what this. That's what this. Uh, that's what this. This. I. Uh, the. This platform of humanity. Of com <laughs> this is what this uh, platform for uh, um, the community of humanity is for. It's for us to help heal. And. Um, and, and, and to create boundaries and to expose our imperfections and collapse the false self that keeps wanting to develop, you know. Um, and humbly accept our imperfections. Stop the splitting. Take responsibility for our consciousness. Man, our, if we don't have, uh, we, if we don't become aware of how important it is to take responsibility for our consciousness, we will continue having play out this collective and individual trauma. Um, so, the aim of toxic relationships is to heal. It is the gateway to into the process of individuation, the process into the process of divine humility. The process of divine humility, um, and and when we have this wisdom and we're able to accept our imperfection, I accept my imperfection, but I have to take responsibility for it. I have been abusive. I have been unkind. And I am sorry for that. I'm sorry for hurting in another soul in the world. I don't ever want to do that again. Ever. So I want to exemplify what I'm talking about here. <clears throat> so there has been a very publicized separation of um, Richard Grannon and Sa Sam Vaknin, who are pioneers and are mentors of mine in this field. They are geniuses of our time. They're very important, but they have a very publicized separation. And I've, I've noticed, um, I've noticed um, comments, and you know, there, people have just been, you know, externalizing. They're they're projecting their their lack of uh, wholeness, um, and and they're belittling them, and they're judging them, uh, or they people are starting to split. You know, it's like, oh well, I I like Sam Vaknin better than than Richard Grannon. I like Richard Grannon better. That's that's just that's just another example of splitting. That's just another example of what we need to stop doing. I think I, what I'd like to bring out in the open is that um, their separation it was inevitable because they are admittedly wounded people. They are imperfect. They are not, no one is, should be put on a pedestal as a God. They are, they are if, they, if we identify them as a static state of perfection, the hero, Hero, uh, a hero is the process of a uh, process of in of of accepting ambiguity of our our nature as both good and evil, and so their 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 um their their separation is is it is an example of the healing process in the psyche, and I think I want to bring this out in the open. We should have compassion. 
for them. Now they have to take responsibility for whatever shadow side is evident in them. We, have, we all have to do that individually. And when we start doing that, we stop judging each other. We stop um, the splitting. We stop the external locus of control. We start healing. Okay? And when we have compassion, we suffer with each other. Uh, we have compassion. We, we, suffering is what heals us. That's a very Saturnian concept. We will talk more about that eventually. Um, so I wanted to bring that up. Um, and I, so I, I, I'm, I mean, there, and they, they both should be listened to critically, of course, always critically. You are intelligent enough. You are, you have your own soul. You, you can go inside and judge for yourself. How do you know? Because it feels right for you, right? So if we want compassion, we must give it both in outwardly and inwardly. We have to even have compassion for ourselves. I have compassion for my trauma, I, uh, for my, uh, my woundedness. And that's why I can publicly, I can publicize to the world my imperfection now because I am collapsing my false self. It is an act of me collapsing my false self. And I want the world to see that because it's possible for all of us to do that. It's what we're here to do. <clears throat> and it's a very humbling experience. I mean, individuating is a divine process of humility because we have to accept the dualistic, unified nature of our consciousness. Okay. So, for lack of better term at this point, um, you know, we... We, we're in an archetypal battlefield that exists in the archetypal processes of, of consciousness. So the battlefield exists. So let's just, I don't know if you remember, oh, I should just pull it up. Okay, okay then, I'll just pull it up. Um, okay, I'll pull up my thing so we can look at that right now. Okay, and then I can show you. Okay, so let's look at this right now. This is, this is, um, um, a model that I that I created using the Vesica Pisces, the very initiatory uh, sacred geometry that creates all sacred geometry, which is an ex ex exemplification uh, to help us understand the functioning of consciousness. So here is the outer world, the the function, the uh, the external realm of our consciousness, and uh, the phenomenal, and then we have the we have the unconscious realms of our psyche where our collective unconsciousness exists and then we want to healthily interpolate that to to how to find wholeness well we can take that we can move that forward with any uh any um archetypal process being a villain and being the hero um are conjoined as dualistic unified archetypal processes um, so the toxic, our toxic partnerships, they are our counterpart, you see, that's why they feel so like, this is my effing soulmate, man. I, and you don't want to let go They you, they are your counterpart, but you've come here to separate from each other, right? So it, it so you guys are are um, in in the process of separation and exposure, you you eliminate the false you expose the false self in in yourself and the other. So uh, so that you expose uh, the processes of the two archetypes of the villain and the hero in both of in, in yourself and the other. So so here we have so we have two archetypal processes that are dualistically unified. Okay, so the villain is is a shadow side of this dynamic, right? It's but it's in us. It's it's a good thing. I mean, it's, it um. But this this is meant the villain, the antichrist, the image of imperfection is meant to be alchemized and processed into into becoming the hero and 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 alchemized into. Um, 
into the into the into the image of perfection but but not not the not the the hero not the hero as a static phenomenon of perfect perfection but the interpolation of the two archetypal processes in a dualistically unified relationship and this is how consciousness works in everything i will show you and so i'm just taking these these two these are like two primary archetypes in the the uh the psyche and because we we're and and christianity does this carl jung talks about this that the the problem with christianity is it's splitting the psyche and 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 we're external we have christianity has an external locus of control it's saying that if if you're not more like christ and you don't follow the church and the church as an external false mother if you don't follow us then then you're going to become you're 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 a villain you're born as a villain well yes you're born as a villain but you're also born as a hero we have to interpolate these two in order to alchemize these two archetypal processes we have to interpolate them to find find wholeness it's a procedural process of, of these two archetypes they are functioning archetypal opposites and they are meant to help us guide us toward healing of the psyche healing of consciousness through the interpolating of the two dualistic unified opposites um, and so we're going to go into this i i'm i i'm going to be talking about eventually i have a, a, a an impromptu lecture prepared i'm going to be discussing codependency and empathy um, because those are also dualistically unified archetypal processes that we are here to alchemize so we we have to stop the splitting the we have to stop the concretization of, of archetypal processes and understand what they mean okay we're gonna I'm, we're gonna teach I'm gonna teach this okay I want to teach this because this is my process of my healing and I want to share that with you because I, I think this is this may help us guide us toward a collective healing um, and so, for lack of a better world word, I mean, we have we're in a kind of battlefield, right, between the villain and the the hero image in ourself. So we're dealing with uh, with the battlefield that is existing in both the external and the internal realms. The 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 we're dealing with a battlefield of, of how consciousness is processing itself from the external experience into the internal experience, back out into the external experience, and how we are meant to interpolate our consciousnesses together in a healthy way, not merge. And we're and and then we have we have these mob mentalities, which is a macrocosm of this dynamic. We will talk about this. We will I, we will we'll get into this. So. Um, We, we're here to understand, well, let's see, I'll just, okay, let's, let's, let's get back to this. So, so when I expose myself, um, I inadvertently expose my counterpart to themselves. I'm not exposing them to the world. I'm, I inadvertently expose them to themselves, which is actually necessary for the collapse of their false self. Now, I'm not responsible for that person. I'm not, I can't. I'm not going to get on my high horse and identify with the hero image as a static perfect phenomenon and say I have it, you know, this this uh, hero complex with the god complex. I'm the one who's supposed to teach you. No. Bullshit. Um, but when we um, are honest and authentic with ourselves when we can ex in admit to our villainous natures, I admit to my villainous nature um, and I, I, I can, I'm able to stop the splitting by, by accepting the ambiguity of, of um, uh, the ambiguity uh, and the confusion, uh, confuse, confusing nature of, of imperfection, basically. So it is exposure that collapses the, the false self and it stops the splitting. Wholeness is exception, accepting ambiguity, confusion, and imperfection. It is a process of divine heal, healing, uh, divine humility. Um, it is it, in relationship to the unknown realms. 
and the unreal and this is this is this here this vesica pisces this diagram this is uh an example of what we're trying to do in to order to create wholeness we're trying to interpolate these two archetypal processes and accept imperfection okay and um and when we do this, we are, we're breaking the cycle of abuse. So I am pioneering humanity to break the cycle of abuse and heal our collective trauma. When we understand that cluster B personality disorders result in oftentimes from complex post-traumatic stress trauma, we can have com compassion for ourselves in individually and, and, and um, collectively. Because when we start going into this hero's journey, we the first step is entering into the realms of the shadow. Yeah, we're going into the realms of the shadow here. Okay, the realms of the shadow. Um, ha uh, we have to accept our shadow in our in order to eventually, uh, eventually um, integrate the opposite of the thing that that our our external natures want to. Um, internalize, which is a which is an ideation of perfection. I am not perfect. I am only. I am not special in and of myself. I am normal. Okay, and 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 um, okay. So so it is not my responsibility to heal another person. It is their responsibility. But um, in the in the process of me exposing myself. I am, I am, I am opening the gateway to the inner realms where we can collapse the false self. And we're, we're going to talk more about this. And I'm going to learn more from Sam Backman and Richard Grannon because they're they're amazing. And uh, and I know they're having a fallout and they're having a separation. But learn from both of them. And you know what's really cool about them is that like Sam Backman is a uh, kind of approaches things on a more Freudian level, and then. Um, and then Richard Grannon kind of um, approaches things on a union level, and I was kind of chuckling the other day because uh, they, you know, they, they uh, <laughs> they're they're kind of they're kind of having a, uh, a they're, it's like the the Freud the Freud and union uh, conflict lives on in the psyche psyche, and now living li and go, moving through um, Sam Backman and and uh, and Richard Grannon. <laughs> It's funny. It's like they're the living spirit of Freud and Jung in their in their conflicts and separations, living in <laughs> in Richard Grannon and Sam. But please, please, um, please, let's have compassion for them. And and I mean, of course, if there is any um, villainous toxicity, that we have to they have to take responsibility for that. There has to be. Um, but 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 as individuals um, seeking a process of he wholeness, trying to 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 heal, uh, whoops, trying to heal. I don't know why I did that. Well, trying to you know um, alchemize the these two uh, pro procedural archetypes. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm losing track of thought. I haven't eaten yet this morning. I have an eye appointment. And I wanted to get this out of the way. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, so we all can be pioneers, uh, pioneers, uh, you know, pioneering humanity into breaking the cycle of abuse. I mean, when we're, you know, when we're talking about complex trauma, we're talking about narcissism, we're talking about borderline, we're talking about uh, antisocial personality disorder. Uh, when we're talking about all these things, we're really talking about a cycle of abuse here, um, in, 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 in a way. And, and so we have to, we individually have to break our own cycles of abuse. I'm breaking my cycle of abuse. And I don't ever want to go back into that toxicity again. And I invite you to really examine these, these, these dueling concepts that reside in you and face your shadow and transmute that to become a procedural hero in understanding that we are imperfect, that these, that the villain and the hero exists in all of us, right? And we cannot expose um, our toxicity without exposing our villainous natures. 
and that's what I'm doing. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I, I am, I am, I am both, I'm both hero and villain at the same time. And as I accept that, I invite you to accept that. Okay. Let's see. Um, Ah, okay, and my last thought here. I'm going to expand from Richard Grannon's um, analogy or metaphor. I might be using those words wrong. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean. Um, well, he was saying that, you know, it's like narcissism is like, is like, it's like you can look at vampires, you know, the mytholo 